I'm cutting my video making break a bit short by making this video, so graphics still haven't been completely overhauled, but with Alan Wake 2 getting a new, far more expansive trailer at the PlayStation Showcase and not the Summer Games Fest as expected, I feel there are worse things to do than jump right back in. I just want to dig through the trailer and supplementary press releases and discuss what's been revealed, as well as how many of the theories that I came up with after the initial teaser came out appear to still be possible. Spoiler alert, it's not the game I was expecting. With that out the way, let's get straight to the point. One of the big reveals of the new trailer is a confirmation of just who we can expect to face while playing through Alan's Escape from the Dark Place. In that initial theory crafting session, I said it would likely be either the return of the Taken, the unfortunate denizens of Brightfalls possessed by the Dark Presence, or it would be the Coat of the Tree, a mysterious organisation we know almost nothing about, beyond their main place of influence being Brightfalls neighbouring town of Watery. Well, it appears to be that players will actually be facing… both. The masked men we see several times throughout the trailer are clearly engaging in cult-like behaviour, the trailer opens with what seems to be some sort of ritual sacrifice, and they appear multiple times wearing the coat of the tree symbol of two vertically interlinked triangles, further solidifying their allegiance. But while the coat appears to be the primary antagonist of the Pacific Northwest areas of the game, the few snapshots of Alan in the Dark Place show him fighting a group of ethereal spirits, who are clearly not part of this human group. In fact, they don't even appear to have a truly physical body, so calling them Taken may not even be correct. I find it most likely that these are still agents of the Dark Present, but residing in the Dark Place means that they no longer need to entrap people to attack enemies. Another thing that many appear to have missed when watching the trailer or it was so obvious that no one felt the need to mention it, is that most of the cult members we see do still have the shadowy aura of the Taken, despite seemingly remaining in far greater control of their mental faculties than the enemies of the original Alan Wake. This leads me to believe that the cult has some sort of connection to the Dark Presence, even if they're not necessarily slaves to its will, like the Taken proper. The definition of a cult is a group of people who follow an unusual set of religious, spiritual or psychological beliefs who can be working towards some sort of common goal or objective. Therefore, my personal pet theory is that the cult of the tree is performing these ritualistic sacrifices and arming themselves in order to commune with the dark presence in some way, presumably in some sort of transactional relationship where cult members are given taken-like abilities in exchange for voluntarily carrying out the dark presence's will. It doesn't quite explain some enemies we've seen, such as the multi-armed being though, the only thing I can say is that these may be either high level cult members, cults generally do see the world differently so this mutation might be considered some sort of gift, or agents that the Dark Presence provides the cult with from the Dark Place. Perhaps the biggest surprise of all revealed here is the appearance of Saga Anderson, an FBI profiler on a case surrounding Special Agent Nightingale from the previous game. I think most people who saw the Alan Wake ending assumed that Nightingale became the new host of the Dark Presence, which can still be the case, but the fact that his death's last disappearance is only being investigated 13 years after his possession would have taken place might make that theory seem more unlikely. Saga is accompanied by Alex Casey, similar to the return trailer found in Quantum Break, although it's yet to be seen how similar her story will be in comparison to the events laid out there. For those unaware, Alex Casey is essentially the Alan Wake's universe's equivalent of Max Payne, hence the Sam Lake appearance in James McCaffrey voice, a fictional character from Alan Wake's most successful book series of the same name. Controls AWE DLC, as well as Alan Wake Remastered's QR codes, essentially spell out that Alan brought Alex Casey into reality in his FBI agent persona, although the repercussions of what that means for him haven't really been fully laid out yet. Saga Anderson portrayed by Melanie LeBird, is herself heavily implied to be related to previous Remedy characters, namely the Anderson Brothers, better known as the Old Gods of Asgard. She is one of two playable characters in Alan Wake 2, the other being Wake himself, and is the character you'll play as in the Pacific Northwest whilst investigating the Coat of the Tree. Both her and Alan's stories will apparently intertwine and affect one another's, seen in the trailer by how she begins to find manuscript pages describing her actions. It seems Saga is designed to be the best place to begin with the game, 
because even if the two stories are happening simultaneously, C is designed to ease new players into the story of the Remedy Connected Universe. Something I found quite interesting is how Alan Wake 2, despite being a completely different genre to the original, survival horror instead of action thriller, still seems to set a similar gameplay loop. From the small snippet of gameplay we see towards the end of the trailer, we can see quite clearly that Saga is simultaneously wielding a torch and gun, which seems to burn off the shadows from her enemies. You might say that this should be obvious, the light mechanic was the core mechanic of the previous game, it shouldn't be at all surprising that it returned, but based off reviews for Alan Wake Remastered, the single most common criticism levied was how the light mechanic had aged poorly, being slow and often tedious. Even going back to trailers and playthroughs of the original version of the game, many comments are to do with how they couldn't get into the game because of how annoying the light mechanic was. Therefore, I assume the Remedy might have decided to scrap the mechanic, or at least heavily rework it, but it seems mostly unchanged. However, I can see how it might fit better here. Survival horror games are often supposed to be slower and more deliberate than action games, so the cat and mouse game of having to avoid the attacks of enemies while still signing light on them will help to ratchet up the tension. Similarly, the constant need to resupply batteries to be able to deal any damage to an enemy could help the survival horror aspect of the game. If you run out of batteries and can't use your torts, then you have to simply run or hide from enemies until more can be found. Fear is immediately sky high when facing horrors you're powerless to stop. Alan Wake 2 is split up into at least four areas throughout the two storylines. Alan Wake will be exploring the Dark Place, which has taken the guise of a permanently nocturnal New York, while Saga will be exploring the three locales of the Pacific Northwest, Bright Falls, Watery, and Cauldron Lake. The Dark Place having taken the form of New York over the watery abyss it once was could lead to some interesting opportunities. We see a huge poster advertising the Colt, some sort of hidden play that is clearly based off the coat of the tree, perhaps further solidifying their link to the Dark Presence. It'll be taking place in the Ocean View Hotel, which is a choice that needs further analysis. Any control players will remember the Ocean View Motel, the ambiguously American roadside motel that Jesse uses to travel through the Otis house. The significance of this being a hotel and not a motel remains to be seen. Will it still have the same dimension warping properties of the motel, or does it have its own unique properties? Finally, for New York, what do you think the likelihood of the oldest house appearing is? It's located in New York City, so, but that doesn't mean much when talking about a twisted version of the metropolis created in another dimension. Would Alan even be able to see it? He may have written about it previously, meaning he was at least once aware of it and therefore able to see and comprehend it, but his bouts of amnesia make it less than certain whether that would still be the case. Saga will begin her journey in Bright Falls, which appears to be in the middle of another deer fest, their 81st in fact. Considering it was the 68th deer fest in Alan Wake, it shows that the same amount of time has progressed in the Remedy world as there has in our world. Sadly, we don't get all that much information about how Bright Falls has changed, it seems nearly identical, and the Alan Wake website doesn't provide any further information on it beyond what we already know from the first game. However, it does give interesting information on the other two regions. Watery is described as a rundown city, founded by Finnish immigrants around the logging and fishing industry. We also know it's the likely headquarters of the Coat of the Tree, and a favourite vacation spot for Arty, the mysterious janitor of the Otis House. Speaking of the Otis House in FBC, we've learned that the Codera of Codron Lake has gained a reputation as a place to avoid since an obscure government agency fenced it off. For anyone unaware, the Federal Bureau of Control that Jesse takes control of in control set up a monitoring station in the aftermath of the departure manuscript in the remains of Hardman's Codron Lake Lodge, so this is likely where we'll find most of the references to control in Alan Wake 2. Finally, we have some small extra details provided by the Alan Wake 2 FAQ. Of course, the game is available to pre-order now for release on October 17th, with pre-order bonuses being an ornate revolver skin for Alan and a set of survival resources for Saga, which I assume will be healing items or something. The game will be digital only, 
another controversy after their Epic Game Store exclusivity, which I feel is a bit overblown. They make a set of compelling arguments for the decision, citing it as a way to ensure prices are lower due to lower manufacturing costs, as well as the fact that discs are becoming more and more redundant, with most people buying games exclusively digitally anyways, and the fact that most discs contain very little of the game, with most of the data being downloaded to console or PC storage. The standard console version will retail at $60, which is equivalent to €60 Euros or £50, and there's a deluxe console version for $80, equivalent to €80 Euros or £65. PC versions will cost less, 10 of whichever currency is relevant to you. The deluxe edition contains Sokken skin for Saga and Alan, as well as a character skin for both, a charm for Saga, and the two paid DLCs for the game, Night Springs and Lake House. I don't really know what could be in either of these. Night Springs is the Twilight Zone-esque TV show that appears throughout Alan Wake, but that doesn't really give much information on what we can expect from this. I initially thought Lake House might be an inversion of the AWE DLC for Control, with it being a teaser of Control 2, before remembering their monitoring site is in Cauldron Lake Lodge and not Cauldron Lake House, so I also have no ideas as to what this could be. And with that, I think I've covered more or less everything that we got from Alan Wake 2 so far. There's a few really small little details that I didn't mention, like the fact that the Cauldron Lake General Store still has a poster for the 68th Deer Fest, or that the Coffee World sign in Bright Force is apparently mentioned in Alan Wake Remastered as an attraction in Watery, but I can't really see anything about them beyond they're there. More footage of raw gameplay is going to be shown off on June 8th at the Summer Games Fest, where we can expect to see more information on how the game will actually play and likely just how horror Alan Wake 2 will actually be. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.